Well, the paper that I will be presenting uh, is a joint work with one of my colleagues at Oxford University. So, um, and it's focusing on the case of Mexico. So I'm very glad that our colleagues from Senegal uh, were talking about some things that we also reach upon in our studies. So it was, uh, it was nice that I don't have to talk too much about it. But, um, um, well, the paper is on the website, so I will skip many things related to the literature, which is very slim. But um, just by beginning, uh, uh, one of the motivations of this paper was um, uh, that uh, uh, there have been some inter interesting innovations in the context of Mexico, um, which tried to link public and private service um, institutions. Um, and potentially this can have important uh, effects on the, on the efficiency of the provision of these goods. Uh, so the idea of this paper, our hope is that we can contribute to the literature on conditional cash transfers and uh, by examining uh, the recent introduction of the electronic payment system of, of uh, Progresa, or now it's called Prospera, and we are looking at a number of dimensions which are related as well with remittances reception. So I will refer to Oportunidades Prospera or Progress as we was initially referred to as POP. So um, just to give you a background of the program, uh, POP was introduced in, in August 1997, initially to cover about 300,000 uh, households in basically in rural areas. Uh, by the end of 2015, the program supported about 6.1 million households, which overall represent 25% of the population of Mexico. So this, uh, this is a massive program, right? So um, POP initially paid cash at uh, distributional uh, points located in towns. And this was very costly for recipients because they had to travel they have to also uh, absorb some opportunity costs from often have to leave their businesses and they have implications about uh, looking up uh, after the kids and, uh, and also there were some risks related to those kind of approaches because as you most likely are aware crime is an issue in Mexico so um, often they were robbed by gangs operating in these locations so there were a number of uh, concerns about this approach so um, in 2001, there was an important legal reform in Mexico that tried to uh, put some uh, more coherent uh, uh, structure to the financial system, uh, and that included non-banking institutions. Um, so the idea of this study is try to exploit the fact that uh, the electronic payment system of POP was introduced. There was a pilot, and it was implemented by this uh, BANCEF is called, it's a state-owned uh, development bank in Mexico, together in partnership with a very extensive red of non-banking institutions, credit association, uh, savings and credit cooperatives, microfinance organizations, and so forth. So the advantage of this uh, strategy was that um, non-banking institutions affiliated to La Red de la Gente, which is POP's network, uh, people's network, sorry, um, focus on localities where uh, Progresa operated. No? So they basically focus on rural areas, on peri-urban uh, localities, and that opened the possibility to introduce these pilots. So this map, in a way, reflects distribution of those uh, branches that belong to Bansefi and non-banking institutions. And you can see the distribution is quite spread across the country with more density in the more populated areas that you can find. So, um, well, um, in a way, what we are trying to do is um, we uh, study the effect of these electronic payments by taking the advantage of the exogenous variation of the introduction of the program. So, so in a way, the, the introduction was decided by the, uh, the managers of Progresa and Bansefi together with the Red, with La Red de la Gente. And that uh, decisions uh, were uh, captured in a survey that was implemented in 2004. It was a panel data set that uh, the, the introduction of the pilot began in 2003, and the collection of this data panel data set 
was uh, began in 2004. So we don't have a baseline, but nevertheless, we capture households, recipients of opportunities with uh, their cash, uh, their benefit in cash or receiving Progresa in cash, and households receiving Progresa in an electronic banking account. So, of course, um, even if we can uh, control for sample sex selection because of the way the pilot was implemented, still we cannot rule out problems of the endogeneity because of non-random uh, uh, selection uh, of the non-banking institutions that were um, uh, participating in this pilot simply because um, these organizations uh, were likely to be selected when they were operating in localities with better infrastructure, no? So most likely localities which were poorer or more remote, uh, they had, let's say, weaker um, systems to provide these uh, cash transfers and therefore most likely were excluded. So the idea of Whereas we don't have problems with self-selection, we still have a, a selection problem uh, by, 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 this, uh, uh, by the fact of the rollout of the program. So therefore, we compute some average treatment effect using some matching estimators. So, so the concern about matching, as you know, is basically related to unobservables. So we believe the main concerns about unobservables are somehow addressed through the way the pilot was rolled out. But nevertheless, we can roll out other factors. But we are quite confident that uh, we are controlling for a very important uh, variation in this uh, observables. So, um, well, the, the literature is very, very thin. So uh, what we are trying to do here uh, is to look at the four-year impact of POPs electronic payments on a number of outcomes, savings decisions, remittance, the reception, and coping strategies against idiosyncratic shocks. And, um, and, uh, and this is very important because in our sample, as well as you may know in Mexico, one in every five or fifth household has a member who is a migrant. So uh, the probability that uh, members uh, of those households uh, that had a, a migrant worker is very high, and we will see uh, later that that's the case. So uh, we also try to unpack some on the underlying mechanism through which we observe those effects. So we are trying to establish some causal mechanisms. So, um, uh, well, because I'm not very good at keeping the time, so I just give you the main results and then let's see how it goes. But um, overall, what we find is that the electronic payment, in a way, decreases participation in informal savings arrangements like Roskins, which makes sense. So people, when they are faced with an opportunity to have savings in a bank account, uh, they uh, most likely choose to use those services, uh, although we don't find any significant effect on savings at home. So, you know, people keep keeping some money under the mattress for, for uh, some eventualities, but the, the, the core of the savings, we find a significant shift. The other one is that uh, households were less constrained on re remittance reception, and as a result, they were less likely to reduce consumption or contract loans to deal with shocks, which is, in a way, more or less what you were finding as well. So we also find an important degree of heterogeneity in terms of the environments that characterize those households, in particular uh, between rural and urban uh, localities. So um, we also find that the nature of the financial institutions play an important role. Uh, the opening of the bank account was free of cost, so they didn't charge any fees. And also the fact that they have a much more friendly environment towards um, clients, contrary to the traditional banking institutions in Mexico, in a way helped the relationship with those uh, households. Um, right, so um, here we are. Uh, I'm in the other way. Okay, so as I said, POP is the largest cash transfer in Mexico and it's one of the largest in the world. Uh, the eligibility is based on a very rigorous methodology in two stages. The first stage identifies localities which are poor based on a census based marginality index. And in a second stage, once you identify the localities, you run 
uh, a census to identify houses based on proxies, proxy means, tests, and categorical criteria, houses with children, and so forth. So the criteria of selectivity is very, very rigorous. So the households who receive the cash or the, the progressa in cash or in electronic transfers are very similar on average. You know? Nevertheless, there are some heterogeneity in the sample, and we will see later. But um, Pope's income support is distributed every two months and is given to women. Uh, the amount of the transfer is quite significant. It's about 20% of the average of household income and more the tighter population and varies because, for example, you have more children, you get more money, and you get, if you have more girls, you get more. So uh, the idea is to compensate the opportunity cost and also uh, norms that are quite persistent in certain communities in Mexico. So, um, well, the pilot, in a way, um, involved, um, a, as I said, a number of institutions, um, and um, um, the, as I said, the accounts were free of opening and maintenance costs. So, uh, there is a previous study that just focuses on administrative data, and uh, he finds a very significant reduction in, in financial and transaction costs for the households. No? So, which is something uh, in a way positive. Um, what we do is to look at um, uh, second order effects here uh, and, uh, and looking at a very uh, representative sample. The, the other sample is a very small one. So, um, during the phase of the pilot phase, more than 90% of POV recipients continue to receive the transfer in cash and just a small share was shipped to the electronic transfer. And this can be seen in this graphic. So as you can see, most of the households receive uh, progressing cash. In 2003, they began a very small percentage, about 5% <coughs> began to receive the transfer in, in a savings account. So our study covers the, the, uh, the period in which the survey was collected. And then over time, Progressa was moved towards a much more uh, electronic approach, and by 2011, all, every single household received the cash in either as an savings account or in prepaid cards. So nobody receives cash anymore. So what we are trying to do is, um, in a way, to exploit this phase to find out the extent to which it has an effect on different dimensions. Oops. Uh, so the data, uh, well, the, 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 the survey covers 25 out of 32 st uh, states in Mexico. Um, the sampling frame was designed to be represented at the three regional uh, areas in Mexico. Uh, the sampling follow um, a, a, a frame which was random, but uh, with a prob probability proportional to the number of clients, which means that those localities with uh, most likely uh, better infrastructure uh, were more likely to be selected in the, in the sample. And this is what we try to control later with these uh, matching estimators. So overall, the survey cover about uh, 17,000 observations, houses in this case. And for the purpose of this study, because not every single client of these institutions received Progressa, so the subsample uh, cover about 3,000 households which is uh, quite a significant number. And uh, what we try to do is to look at households who were always compliant, which means that they always receive either the, the cash, the, the transfer in cash, or in electronic means over the period of analysis. As you saw before, there, no, there is not much variation in this period, and therefore um, uh, a difference in difference approach was not possible uh, because there was not much variation, unfortunately. Right, so um, the, uh, the decision about treatment uh, was basically decided based on a geographical criteria. So households who live in a radius of 10 kilometers around the branch uh, uh, selected these households members. No? So ideally, um, the sample has uh, members borrowing from, uh, sorry, members of these institutions and also households living in the same localities which didn't have access to these uh, uh, services. So uh, the, the issue of the covariate, as I said, uh, it was a source of concern for us. So, and then when we run a very simple t-test, we actually find that 
whereas the atoms don't exhibit significant differences, the covariance does, which in a way confirms our concerns about uh, the, the heterogeneity in terms of the, in the identification of the, of the institutions, which have to deal very often with the characteristics of the localities, whether they're urban or rural, whether they have certain infrastructure, and, and therefore the idea of using the machine it makes sense. So, so in order to do this empirically, we obviously having a linear model of this kind will be biased uh, for the reasons that I just explained. So what we do is uh, we follow two approaches. The first one is to estimate a fully interactive linear model, which as you can uh, imagine, just the interaction allows to find out whether there is a significant heterogeneity in the model. So if you find significant interactions, basically you have to deal uh, with this heterogeneity through a different approach. So I don't present this, but it's in the paper, so the results actually confirm our concerns that there is an issue of heterogeneity. So therefore, we focus on a propensity score matching uh, to, in a way, construct a synthetic or experimental approach. No? So, so I'm sure all of you know about all this, so I don't want to go into details, but we've essentially find uh, another Mahalanobis disymmetric matching uh, of this kind for for the empirics, once we estimate the Mahalanobis metric, we estimate an average treatment effect on the treated. Um, after computing the matching algorithms, which we essentially follow three different uh, uh, approaches, which uh, in a way uh, report very similar results. And the, everything is explained in the paper. So, <clears throat> so uh, for matching, in the matching covariates, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the variables that exhibit some problems, and also we're on some, uh, as, uh, like, a, um, a, a, it's like a fixed effects estimates using matching by controlling rural and urban uh, uh, localities. And you can see, after we run the, the matching, the, uh, the, the standardized percentage bias across different covariates is basically reduced to zero. No? This is before and it's after matching. So the heterogeneity in observables was basically removed, and issues about unobservability or unobservable uh, heterogeneity, uh, we believe at least related to self selection, is also not a concern. Right, so the result is that overall the electronic transfers, as I said, decrease the propensity to participate in raw scales. Um, we find that transaction and opportunity cost are the main drivers behind this. We cannot rule out other intra-household dynamics because we don't observe that, but we cannot uh, rule out potential uh, dynamics in that respect. So the propensity to save at home, again, was not affected by this intervention. What is interesting is that uh, we find that uh, households were much more likely to use savings to cope with, with shocks. And the transmission mechanism was remittances. So remittances reception increased substantially by 90%. So, um, so because households were suddenly receiving more frequent remittances, they were able to save more. And through savings is the mechanism through which households reduce, for example, um, savings or uh, other, uh, sorry, they use savings or, or uh, to cope with, with, with shock. So, I think that this is something that uh, is very important. Um, so in a way, remittances is the underlying mechanism through which savings can be accumulated and reduce different uh, aspects that uh, can be detrimental when uh, households are faced with shocks. So we find an important heterogeneity in terms of the household composition and also the way they live, <coughs> uh, which I don't go, uh, how many minutes do we have? Two. One, okay. But nevertheless, uh, um, uh, overall, um, there is a significant uh, level of heterogeneity, which means that um, it's important to look at the conditions in which these problems are implemented to, to, to in a way, fine tune uh, the effectiveness of those uh, interventions. And, um, well, in a way, what we, we argue is that uh, um, uh, since uh, migration is a very consistent or persistent phenomenon in the concept of Mexico, uh, progress in this case facilitated uh, together with these financial institutions uh, an additional mechanism to deal with shocks uh, for houses which are 
poor or very vulnerable. So uh, obviously the, the, what matters is how these uh, alliances between public and private institutions can maximize the effectiveness of these policies. So, so well, there's a lot of things in the paper, but I think that's it. Yeah.